Elon Musk has recently demonstrated his skills in defending Twitter's image in front of the BBC. A journalist who was obviously just doing his job was trying to attack him on certain maneuvers Twitter has used. And Elon was able to silence the journalist through some simple language abilities. In this video, you will discover how you can replicate the same thing whenever somebody is trying to push your hot buttons or manipulate you into saying something they want you to say. You may know about what is called rhetoric, or being able to debate with people and asserting your position, your points of views, without letting you being dismantled into the views of the person conducting the interview. In the 1970s, Richard Bandler and John Grinder came up with something called the NLP Meta Model, which was based on rhetoric and logic to some extent, but which was originally made for therapists to understand how to unveil the deeper limiting beliefs they hold when they are in a session. You can use exactly the same thing in rhetoric, because it is based on the rhetoric's principles, to unveil all the things people try to get you stuck with mentally that are not based on any real evidence. John Grinder said himself that the NLP meta model was a bullshit detector because whenever you use it on somebody who is having strong views, you will notice if they really know what they're talking about or if it is just full of Mm. And there is one very specific phrase from that model that Elon Musk is going to use at some point that you will discover at the end of the video that is the phrase that caused to silence the journalist once and for all. I will use the sleight of mouth chart in which the meta model can be identified as the chunking down option and you will discover that many times when you ask the specific questions that are pinpointing the veracity of the person's opinion, they are not able to respond respond accordingly because they were just trying to manipulate you or make you say something you don't want to say and it is something you can get out of very easily. The point is that uh, Twitter should be uh, a town square that or, that is uh, gives uh, equal voice to you know the, the whole country and ideally the whole world. Um, it should not be a partisan politics. Uh, so if in order for something to serve as a digital town square it must uh, you know, serve so all people from all political persuasions, uh, provided it's legal. Um, so, you know, cl close to half the country uh, voted for Trump. Uh, I wasn't one of them. I voted for Biden. Um, but nonetheless, uh, you know, free speech is meaningless unless you allow people uh, you don't like to say things you don't like. Otherwise, it's irrelevant. Um, and if at the point at which you lose uh, free speech, uh, it doesn't come back. I, th I think the issue some people have is that a lot of people were brought back. I mean, some people were brought back who uh, were previously banned for spreading things like uh, QAnon conspiracies. You have people like Andrew Tate who were brought back who were previously uh, banned for things like hate speech. Do you think you prioritize freedom of, of speech over misinformation and hate speech? Up to now, Elon Musk has been defining his meta frame, basically what are Twitter's views and what he's uh, trying to accomplish with Twitter, him and his associates. And that is a first point to evaluate when you want to debate with somebody. It is to investigate your topic yourself enough to clearly understand your values, your points of views, and your clear opinions on what you are thinking and doing with the topic at hand. And the journalist is going to try to set up a trap by creating an info which is very known in the world of rhetoric by saying uh, you bringing back personalities that have been banned means that you are prioritizing freedom of speech over misinformation and hateful speech. But Elon is going to respond with the best way you can respond in that situation by questioning uh, for evidence. How do you know that specifically? Which is the basis of the meta model. How do you know that? What is your evidence? What is the truth into what you are talking about? Well, you know, who's to say that something, something is misinformation? Um, who's the arbiter of that? Is it the BBC? You're literally asking me? Yes. 
Well, no, you, you, are, the, the you are the arbiter on Twitter because you own Twitter. Yes, yeah, so I'm saying who, who is to say that uh, one person's misinformation is another person's information? So all those questions are the essence of the meta model. Who said that? What is, the, what is misinformation specifically? Misinformation is what we call in the NLP terminology a uh, nominalization, which means it is not a concrete noun. It is just some process that has been turned into a noun. No need to go, get too technical here. Just question what is the composition of this thing you're talking about? Misinformation, according to whom? Based on what evidence? Who said what is misinformation and what can't be misinformation? What is the rule to define when it is and when it is not? And the question who said that is a very important question whenever somebody is making a judgment about the things you are doing. Oh, you are a bad person, you shouldn't do this. According to whom? Who said I should not do this? Who said what was the right thing and what was not the right thing to do? And how can we know the people who said this was true or right? Some human beings have been wrong all along. You, sometimes you only discover that centuries later. So how do we know the people who said this was the right thing to do or even right in the end? Um, at the point at which you, you said that there is, uh, this is misinformation, like who is but going you, but to you decide that? you misinformation can be dangerous, that it can cause yes. real world harms, that it can potentially cause them. Um... Yeah, so the point I'm trying to make is that the BBC itself has, at times, published things that are false. Do you agree that that has occurred? I, 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 I... And to this, the journalist, starting to get a bit stuck here, is trying to shift to what we call another outcome in the slide of mouth uh, terminology by saying, but don't we agree that misinformation is bad? And Elon Musk is shifting with what we call a change of frame size, reporting to what the BBC has done, and the BBC has done the same thing, or it might be called an apply to self because he's reusing the same thing. But basically the game here is, okay, I asked a simple question, who said that, who said it was misinformation? information and the journalist is uh, shifting questions to which Elon is responding by you want to play that game I can play that game too I'm gonna switch questions too what about the BBC I mean yeah. I, would, I would only just add that you know we have spoken to people who who have been sacked that used to be in content moderation and, and we've spoken to people very recently who were involved in moderation and they just say they just there's not enough people to police this stuff particularly around um, particularly around hate speech um, in the company do, is that well, what hate speech are you address? talking about? I mean, you use Twitter. Right. Do you see a rise in hate speech? I mean, I, I, just a personal anecdote. Like, what do, do you? I don't. P personally, my, uh, for you, I would see I get, I get more of that kind of content, yeah, personally. But I, I'm not going to talk to, talk to the rest of, for, for the rest of Twitter. So you see more hate speech personally? I would say I would see more hateful content in that. In that content probably. you don't like or, or hateful? What do you mean to describe a hateful thing? Yeah, I mean, you know, just content that will solicit a, a reaction, something that may include something that is slightly racist or slightly sexist, those kinds of, those kinds of things. This is here another inference uh, made up by the journalist, meaning that because I have seen more hateful things on my feed, I can say there is more hateful uh, views on Twitter in general. To which Elon is responding first by what we call a redefine or basic reframing, like is it really hate speech or is it just things you don't like? Remember, it is coming back to his meta frame that Twitter is here to give uh, speech to all the people around, even the ones you don't like, which is according to him or his company's views, uh, the basis of free freedom of speech, to allocate enough time to speak even to people you don't like, otherwise it would just be censorship and maybe even dictatorship to some extent. Then he's chunking down again when the journalist is answering, yes, I am seeing more hateful things, like what? And he says slightly some things slightly racist or slightly sexist. So you think if I'm something is slightly sexist, it should be banned? I, no, is that I'm not, what you're saying? I'm not saying anything. I'm saying. Well, I'm just curious. What you, I'm, just, I'm trying to say what you mean by hateful con content, and I'm asking for specific examples. Um, and if, and you just said that if something is slightly sexist, that's hateful content. Does that mean that it should be banned? Well, you've asked me. You've asked me whether my feed, whether it's got less or more. It, I'd say it's got slightly more. That's why I'm asking for examples. Can, right. you, can you name one example? I, I honestly don't use. I, I, honestly, you I don't. You can't name I, a single example. I'll tell you why. Because I don't actually use that for you feed anymore. Because I, I just don't particularly like it. But you and said actually, a lot of people. A lot of people are quite similar. I, I, I only. Well, well, I only look well at hang my, on a second. You said you've seen more hateful content, but you can't name a single example. Not even one. I'm not sure I've used that feed for the last three or four weeks. And I. Well, I then how did you see that hateful content? Content. 
Because I've been I've been using I've been using Twitter since you've taken it over for the last six months. Okay, so then you must have at some point seen the you, for you hateful content. I'm asking for one example. Right. And you I, can't I, give a single and, one. And, and, and I'm saying I, 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 then I, I say, sir, that you don't know what you're talking about. Really? Yes, because you can't give a single example of hateful con uh, content, not even one tweet, and yet you claimed that the hateful content was high. Well, that's a false. No, what I claimed. You just lied. What? No, no. What I claim was. Uh, there are many uh, organizations that say that that kind of information is on the rise. Now, whether whether it has on my feed or example. not, I mean, I, right, and Literally if you look at something one. like the, the uh, Strategic Dialogue uh, Institute in the, U in the UK, they will say that. So they, Look, it's, people will say all sorts of nonsense. I'm literally asking for a right. single example, and you can't name one. Right, and as, as I've already said, I don't use that feed. But let's, well, then how let, would you know? That I don't you, think this is getting anywhere. You literally said you experienced more hateful content and then couldn't name a single example. Right, and as I said, I that's absurd. I haven't, I haven't actually looked at that feed. I then how would you know this hateful content? Because I'm saying that's what I saw a few weeks ago. I can't give you an exact example. Let's move on. We have, we only have a certain amount of time. Um, wow. Well, COVID misinformation. You amazing. The COVID, you've changed the COVID misinformation. Has rules. BBC changed this COVID misinformation? The BBC does not set the rules on Twitter, so I'm asking you. No, I'm talking about the BBC's misinformation about COVID. In the NLP meta model, there is this concept called the complex equivalence or the cause and effect language. Basically, when you see two things in the person's argument that are not supposed to be linked together or that are not bound to be linked together, you can challenge this assumption, this inference, this cause and effect by asking basically something like, how can this mean that? Or how can those two things be connected? Or how can X equal Y? And what he's saying here here is so anything slightly sexist uh, or slightly racist should be banned, should be censored. So because you have seen one thing that was bad, everything should be banned. It is also an exaggeration to some extent, what we call chunking up in that model. But the co the real big argument here is so X should mean Y. And that is the kind of question that often sets people off guard because it is really pointing the exact thing they don't, they can't articulate because when they are trying to attack you or manipulate you just to benefit their own desires or the desires of their company, I guess here it was not really him, the journalist who wanted to cause any harm. I think it was just to direct the incentives he had from the BBC or whoever was behind that. And those questions are specifically pinpointing the void of an argument. When somebody is not having clear evidence on what he's talking about, this question, how can this mean that, or how X should mean Y, are questions that are really pointing out the void into their argument. It doesn't work though, if you are using that question too early. This question only works if you are using it once you have enough information. From the beginning, Elon Musk has been clarifying a lot the information the journalist was coming up with, all the clarifying the evidence, how do you know that, what is your example, what is the specific example of that, when did you see that, who said that. All those small questions are really get made to get at the deeper part or the deep point of the, the person's opinion. Once you are at the deepest part of their opinion, then you can use a challenging question like that. And this is what is going to kind of shut down or silence the person because they can't keep advancing on something they don't literally know about. If you have enjoyed, you can subscribe and you will see many more breakdowns We're using sleight of mouth, uh, hypnotic language, or NLP language patterns and NLP techniques. Overall, I would be glad to see you again.